Okay. Good evening, everyone. My name is Julia. I live in Merritt, BC, which is about three hours east of Vancouver and about an hour west of Kamloops. Um, I'm not going to talk about my personal experiences too much because I really haven't had any personal experiences this year. It's all been about what I'm going to talk about. And um, I don't know anything about any aspect of agriculture this year other than what's going on in the meat industry. So that's what I'm going to talk to you guys about tonight because this is my life right now. It's been a crazy, crazy year. Our abattoirs are processing 42% more than they were doing month over month last year. We have a very serious processing crisis here. Producers can't get their animals killed and cut and wrapped in spite of the fact that we have huge demand for our products and we just can't meet it. Uh, the good news is due to COVID and, and all of the crisis in the meat industry, we have been getting a lot of media coverage this year. And so more and more people are aware of the issues. Uh, like, I was said in the introduction, I started an association called the Small Scale Meat Producers Association a few years ago. And so following is kind of what we've been up to with that association for the past year. Next slide, please. So in January, the Agricultural Land Reserve and Agricultural Land Commission Revitalization Committee released their report on their 2019 public engagements. Tim, can you switch to the next slide or is it just frozen on my screen? I see you on, Julia, yeah. on the January screen. Okay, good, then it's just frozen on mine. Okay, I'm just gonna keep going then, except that I kind of need, there we go. Okay, we have this funny thing here in British Columbia where a lot of the agricultural land is zoned agricultural land reserve. And so it can be privately owned, but it is highly, highly regulated. And I mention it because a lot of meat producers are affected by some of these regulations. And it's way more than I can go into in seven minutes, but, um, the, the mandate of these consultations that are on, ongoing right now is to support farmers and ranchers in the ALR to expand and diversify their businesses, help newer young farmers become established on the land and in business, and ensure there is flexibility for residential options while prioritizing agriculture in the ALR. This has been really controversial. In the, the most contentious issue seems to be the, the housing uh, you're only allowed to have one residential dwelling on your property in the ALR, which is really an issue for a lot of producers. Next slide, please. In February, our Vice President Tristan Banwell from Spray Creek Ranch in Lillooet attended the, C the Certified Organic Associations of BC conference advocating for and educating small scale meat producers. Little did we know this was gonna be the last time anybody was gonna be attending anything for a while. And then the other thing that happened in February was the province's meat inspection budget was cut and all of our abattoirs were notified that they were no longer allowed to use the inspectors overtime hours. And this was a real issue because it's hard enough to get the inspectors out and you know sometimes things take longer than seven hours. And so this was sort of the beginning of things really going sideways at the abattoirs. Next slide, please. So March COVID hit and it was COVID, COVID, COVID all the time. We had a huge jump in sales as I'm sure everybody across the country did. All of a sudden, everybody decided it'd be a really good idea to have a relationship with a local producer and everybody sold out. Um, we sold three months worth of meat in two weeks, personally. Plekis Meats in Nanaimo on Vancouver Island shut down. They had been in operation for 30 years. And so that was a real hit to, or sorry, yeah, to the, the producers on Vancouver Island because the next nearest abattoir was quite far away. Uh, because of COVID, 
a lot of funding suddenly started becoming available and the Small Scale Meat Producers Association was surprised to receive a grant for $10,000 to design a rural slaughter plant um, from a grant that we were told we weren't going to get at the end of last year. Um, the regional district of Kootenai Boundary also received a half a million dollars to fund uh, the construction of a meat processing facility and development of a regional brand and grass-fed certification program for the from, also from the same funder. Next slide, please. Which brings us to April. We had COVID outbreaks left, right, and center at four different um, poultry processing plants. And then obviously there was the big outbreaks at the plants in Alberta, which had a real trickle down effect here in British Columbia. More government funding started rolling out with things like the on-farm and post-farm food safety programs, which um, made up to 70% of costs funded for between $7,500 and $15,000 for producers and secondary processing facilities like abattoirs. Next slide, please. In May, uh, the owner of Magnum Meats in Rock Creek, which is one of the most relied upon processors in the Okanagan area, collapsed and died unexpectedly following a business trip. He was 37 years old, and this left behind his wife and three kids trying to manage a slaughter plant and cut and wrap facility. This was also obviously a huge problem for the processors in the, or the producers in the area as the plant struggled to stay in operation. The last I'd heard, they have canceled all of their 2021 dates but the grant I mentioned earlier that went to the Kootenai region is being used to try and form a producer co-op to get this plant um, back up and running and turn it to a producer co-op. So we're really hoping that that's gonna happen. Also in May, $252 million in federal emergency aid was announced by the federal government, which was good news for producers. Next slide, please. In June, the province designated three new areas for our Class D rural slaughter licensing. British Columbia has a bit of an interesting licensing system here whereby you can actually slaughter on farm legally under two slaughter licenses, a D and E. And E allows for smaller capacity and has more limitations. As you can see from the map, it's the darker red areas that were designated, which are tiny. And so the impact was really not that great. And we have been lobbying really, really hard for some bigger changes to allow for more on-farm slaughter here in BC, because as COVID has so eloquently demonstrated, the current abattoirs simply can't keep up with the demand. The Investment Agriculture Foundation started accepting applications for between $10,000 and $100,000 in funding through the Emergency Processing Fund for Western Canada. And the Small Scale Meat Producers Association was happy to find out that we had been approved for a grant of $73,220 from Investment Agriculture to do a, an extensive survey of small scale producers across the province. Next slide, please. In July, we lost another abattoir. The Cluck Stops here is a licensed Class A poultry plant on Vancouver Island, and they shut down for good. Some small producers and abattoirs started to receive some shared cost funding for facility upgrades for COVID safety and emergency processing capacity. Fresh Valley Farms in Armstrong got the on-farm food safety funding and COVID funding for some specific things. They also have an abattoir on site and they received funding for things like masks, staff washroom, et cetera, and emergency processing funding for their HVAC and cooling, about $40,000 in shared cost funding specific to COVID anyway. In August, next slide please, 
the ministry announced that responsibility for administration of the rural slaughter licenses that I mentioned earlier, which is currently being overseen by our regional health authorities would be returning to the Ministry of Agriculture effective December 1st. This was a really important first step for us because a lot of the restrictions on farm slaughter were regional due to the fact that the oversight was being provided by the regional health authorities. Moving oversight back to the Ministry of Agriculture, we're hoping means that they are going to remove a lot of these regional restrictions and that producers will be able to not only slaughter on farm, but be able to sell that meat into the wider market throughout the province. Next slide, please. In September, Spray Creek Ranch in Lillooet received approval for their emergency funding to upgrade their facility to a Class A abattoir, which is really good news for the whole region. They already had a Class D license, but this will allow them to do much greater capacity for themselves and for the, the producers in the region. The ministry released an intentions paper on rural slaughter. The association, the Small Scale Meat Producers Association had been in close communication with the Ministry of Agriculture since March when COVID hit. And we had quite a lot of feedback to give them before this paper was introduced. And we're very hopeful that this process is going to result in some relief for us on the slaughter side in the new year. $500,000 in funding was also made available for tissue waste disposal for abattoirs and on-farm slaughter facilities. Next slide, please. In October, we lost another one, uh, Kiwano Farms Abattoir up north in Prince George closed for the rest of the year due to an injury, which really illustrated how precarious the system is. It just takes one guy being off work to bring down the abattoir, especially when you're operating at 42% at more capacity than you were the previous year. But some good news, BC Beef Producers Co-op uh, was founded and signed a lease to get one of the federal plants here that had been closed down for a while going again in West Wall, BC. We had another COVID outbreak at Sunrise Poultry in the Fraser Valley and a COVID outbreak at JBL Beef Processing in Delta, also down in the Lower Mainland. Small scale meat producers applied for a $1 million syrup grant, hoping to build a class A abattoir here in Southern BC. So that was exciting to find out about that funding opportunity and it's not even cost shared. So we're cautiously optimistic. So here we are in November, we are hiring an executive director, which we desperately need. Uh, as was said in the introduction, this association is being run by a bunch of farmers and ranchers who already have more than full-time jobs. So we're pretty excited to be getting an ED. The deadline for feedback on the Ministry of Agriculture's intentions paper was this month, and we rallied to get a lot of producers to get that feedback in, and hopefully it will all be considered and some great changes will be coming down the pipes. Meanwhile, can, uh, producers are continuing to have their slaughter dates postponed and even straight up canceled throughout the province. We're getting calls constantly from people that have had their dates canceled asking where they can go and we have literally nowhere to send them. Next slide, please. Moving forward, looking at the rest of the year and into the new year, we are going to lose another major abattoir on December 23rd when Finley Meats shuts down after 30 years in business. We'll wait to hear what the Ministry of Agriculture intends to do with all of the responses and consultations and endless feedback that we have provided to them. And we hope to hear good news about our grant application for our Class A abattoir in the new year. Next slide, please. That is the end. I will just leave you with these final words of wisdom. Do not Google cute pig butts curly tails in the images. Scary things come up. Thank you all.